Football is a fast, it's an athletic game and normally favours quicker, stronger and simply fitter athletes. But there's always that midfielder who can't seem to jump, can't seem to run and the only thing he can seem to do is ping 40 yard diagonals and score screamers upon screamers. So in this video we look at the art and beauty of the unathletic midfielder. Where to start? Maybe the best unathletic midfielder what, of all time? Definitely my generation and that's got to be Tony Cruz. He's a World Cup winner, Champions League winner and also probably has an all time heat map like Gerrard against Man United in 2015. If you know, you know. Clearly Tony Cruz's strength is that he was ambipedal, which apparently means that he can use both feet. It's such an underrated skill and I think that he might have been the best passer in the world during his career. I think when you're playing for a team like a Real Madrid, like a Bayern Munich, you have to be comfortable taking it on both feet. And he was the best in the world at that, which allowed him to play in that deep line playmaker position. Obviously, Casemiro during his time at Real Madrid was the main defensive midfielder, but Tony Cruz was there with him. And we all know it's the best way to start the attack, playing out through the defence, through the midfield. I mean, we all know his free kicks, his screamers. I mean, the one against Sweden Sweden in a stoppage time in the World Cup in 2018 is one of the most beautiful goals you're ever going to see. And I think obviously if you compare it to Real Madrid's midfield nowadays with Duke Bellingham, Federico Valverde, Tushimeni, Camavinga, it's so energetic compared to what it used to be and I think that's the new way Ancelotti is pushing the team. However, having Luka Modric, who yes, he did run about a lot, and I wouldn't really call him unathletic, but then having Tony Cruz and then obviously Casemiro, there's not a lot of pace and just power running in that midfield. But it constantly dominated teams, which I think there's such a beauty about. But why do I think these players are so important to the game of football? Football is a meritocracy. It's not like basketball, you don't have to be tall. It's not like rugby, you have to be big, or cricket, you have to be boring. Football is completely based on your skill. You can be five foot seven and be the best player in the world. You can be six foot five with absolutely no running ability, and you also can be one of the best players in the world. There's no in between. As long as you can kick a ball in the right direction to the right person at the right time, you can make it as a professional footballer. And I think Tony Cruz embodies this because he is someone who clearly didn't have the athleticism of a Jude Bellingham, but he worked on his craft so much that he was perfect on both feet. He was perfect at passing, he was perfect at shooting. And obviously that took him to the top of the game. I mean, clearly another one would be Andrea Perlo, maybe a bit more mobile than a Tony Cruz, but my favourite one, I've done a video on about three months ago, Andrea Perlo in 2012 Euros was the best player. I mean, against my home country, England, he dominated us and it's one of the best performances you'll ever see. I know there's always the cringy quotes that you'll see people a lot of the times faking Perlo's name next to them, but to sum it up, it's football is played with the mind. And I think these players, they show that, don't they? Because you can have all the athletic players you want. If Polo knows exactly the angles and the directions to play his passes, dribble, even the little first touches that he can get just to get a couple of yards away from a player. It's one of the most skillful things in football. But these are the Rolls Royces of unathletic midfielders and we can talk all day about them. But let's talk about the Ford Fiestas of unathletic midfielders. John Joe Shelby, very similar to the car, fairly reliable, will break down every now and again and is definitely on his way out. I don't think he'll fit in the streets won't forget era. People forget, wow, what a player John Joe Shelby was every one in 30 games he used to play. I remember him coming through at Liverpool, I believe it was under Roy Hodgson and a bit of Kenny Daglish. And there was a reason why he was getting put in the midfield occasionally with a Steven Gerrard. Was that because Liverpool were seeing players like Paulson and Aquilani getting pushed into the squad who just simply weren't good enough? Potentially. But again, he was still very advanced for his age. And I think he showed this because he had a good career in Newcastle. He had a good career at Swansea. And when you are watching a player half volley the ball from the halfway line against Aston Villa into the net. It just showed the absolute quality he had. Unfortunately, with John Joe Shelby, he didn't have the professionalism, he didn't have the work ethic of a Tony Cruz, and therefore he could never get to the heights that potentially he could have. I mean, what was holding him back? There weren't many midfielders who were technically as gifted as John Joe Shelby. Let's all just calm down with this. He wasn't one of the best midfielders ever, but technically... He was definitely up there in the Premier League at the time. Apparently his career was ruined by drinking and partying too much, but in a weird way, there's a certain romance with those type of players. 
and I'll give you John Joe Shelby and I'll raise you a Tom Huddleston. Tom Huddleston was one of, again, the most technically gifted players of his generation within England. He got called up to the England score by Fabio Capello and he got called up again by Roy Hodgson. And if people remember, I don't know if many of you will, that was about a two month spell when Tom Huddleston was playing in 2012. He was insane. I believe he's at Spurs at the time. He might have been at Hull City, but I believe he was at Spurs. And he was just fantastic at that time. I don't think many off the field issues really caused him not to progress. I think injuries hampered him a tiny bit. I think he was a bit more promising than a John Joe Shelby. And we can't forget when he didn't shave his hair for about two and a half years when he was trying to raise money for charity, he was like a bigger Tony Cruz, but just obviously a lot less accomplished. He was brilliant on both feet, he had a great shot on him, and realistically, he could have been one of England's best midfielders of the 2010 era, if it just really worked out well for him. He had a solid career at Hull City, he had a decent career at Tottenham, and he's recently been in the Youth Academy at Man United, which just shows his kind of pedigree within the game. The best thing about these unathletic, quality midfielders who just never really made it big, is that on the odd occasion, you would get a world-class game out of them. It's the brilliant quote from Robbie Savage that he said in a game when he played Michael Essien, he man-marked him and then he was world-class. Yeah, I was world-class. Uh, on individual it? games. Yes. It got laughs out of the punditry and it is ridiculous to say Robbie Savage was world-class at one point. But it is true in the sense that a player can be world-class in a certain game. And I'd argue Tom Huddleston probably has been world-class in some games that he's played. Of course, nowhere near the consistency to even be a top class player, but I really do think there's an art to these unathletic midfielders. Obviously, the frustrating part is that most of them could have been better. Tony Cruz, Sergio Busquets, Andrea Perlo, they all maxed out the potential with their limited physical abilities. Of course, the players like a John Joe Shelby, a Tom Huddleston, Henry Lansbury, maybe even Johan Kabai for PSG and Newcastle, I mean, he was probably on his way there, maybe a few injuries. I think in the way some players can rely on their athleticism a bit too much, maybe like Adama Traore, you could always go about him if he just learned how to finish, learn how to cross properly on a consistent basis, you'd be the best player in the world. And I think this was similar to those guys. If you look at a Henry Lansbury for Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest, he played in loads of teams. Bit of a party boy and just kind of let his career dwindle out. But he was so talented. He was such a talented footballer. And I think he relied on that. He's somewhat has relied on it to a decent level. And if that's up to them, that's up to them. But it's just frustrating when you have these players that you know can be a top class player but they just rely on their, I never believe it God-given talent, but I do believe some players just have a knack in the game that they can rely on. But again, as many things do in football, this might start becoming a lost art. Football is becoming more athletic than ever. Look at all the midfielders in the game nowadays. They have to run because one, the fullback's pushing up further, so they have to cover that. And obviously the wingers are pushing up a lot further, so they have to cover that. You're going to struggle to be a sitting midfielder who can't really run nowadays. I think there's always place for them, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jorginho for Arsenal and Chelsea was a brilliant player at times. But also at times, Chelsea had to play Mateo Kovacic over him. Arsenal have to play Thomas Partey and Declan Rice over him. But I don't think there'll be a player that inspires a whole generation of kids more than these unathletic midfielders because not every person growing up is an elite athlete and therefore you can rely on your talent and work on your passing and your shooting to potentially achieve your dream of becoming a footballer. But let me know what you think about this type of footballer. Was it good to watch? Was it bad to watch? Did your team have some? Did you get a bit bored of them at times? Did you think John Joe Shelby and Tom Huddleston were going to be brilliant as well? Maybe it's just me. But if you like this video, if you can leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. But thanks for watching.